Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It, Paint It. Today, painting a model from Subterra. This is going to be the scout from the game. It just happens to be one of the models we've used quite a lot during the game. I keep randomly picking it. I think I've played the game three times. I've been the scout three times. Therefore, I'm going to paint her. She is my model of choice. I'm going to start with Vallejo's Cold Grey. This is a base coat paint that can also be used as a primer. I haven't primed this model because it's still freezing cold outside. And it's just a single model and it's just it's just a lot easier to do it all in one go so i just base coated the whole model in cold gray there and then i'm using charred brown exactly the same vallejo's color game color which allows you to use it as a primer and a base coat in one go so now i'm just painting the rest of the, the model so i painted all the upper model and now i'm just painting the the ground she stood on in this brown so that's the priming and base coat done all in one the next color i'm going to use is black I haven't got <laughs> I haven't got Vallejo's black, so I have to use a different one. For this one, I'm going to use War Colors Black. Just it's an opaque black, apparently. It does say opaque on the on the um on the dropper bottle. However, I, I find it quite watery. I, I feel like it's like a layer paint instead of a base paint. But anyway, you know, sometimes it saves me watering it down. I I find it this consistency is like perfect for me. So I'm gonna be painting most of the scout in black. She in in the artwork she looks like she's primarily wearing black, maybe a little bit of grey as well. So I'm going to be painting in her sort of boots. Her I think she's wearing like trousers, but in the model it looks more like leggings and shorts perhaps. But but nevertheless, I'm going to be doing all of her lower body in black. I'm also going to be doing her rucksack in black, and she's got some gloves and armbands on as well both of which I'm going to do in black and the, the body of the torch as well that she's holding. She's just mostly black. If you're painting this model yourself and you don't mind deviating from the artwork, you can use some different colors here and you're going to really make the details pop out a little bit more interestingly, I guess I'd say, if you painted her, her leggings a different color to her shorts or maybe her boots a little different color. But I wanted to keep to the artwork and show you how she looks if you, if you paint her black, really. I'm then going to use Army Painter's Necromancer Cloak. This is my darkest gray. And this is to do her top. In the artwork, it looks slightly lighter than the rest of her clothes. So mixing it up here, black and then just slightly off black. So I'm going to be painting her tank top in, in this necromancer cloak, as well as her climbing helmet that's on the back of her rucksack. And then once they're both done, I'm going to move on to the rock that she stood on, just giving that a really, really nice dark gray base coat here. Just on top of that, light gray that I, I primed it with really so i'm replacing most of these cold gray colors just gray is a nice color to prime with to begin with if you have to pick a random color survivor skin army painters this is currently my favorite skin color skin tone and i'm just going to be painting in a skin so that's her face her arms and her sort of neck and shoulder line i guess yeah and then she's wearing like gloves that you can see her fingers and the backs of her hands on as well so i'm going to do that for her hair she's got like this bright pink hair so i'm going to use army painters pale flesh that's the same as their toxic boils color and there's probably other versions of it this is from their latest zombie side green horde set i'm going to use their flesh wash then to to um to shade her flesh really so it's just a skin colored wash it's slightly reddy orange and i i'm liking it i'm enjoying this this flesh wash i think it tones the skin nicely and then i'm going to just use survivor shader which is the black wash by army shader basically for the rest of the model so the rock all of her blacks and grays and then also the ground that she stood on just to give some contrast and definition to the, the, the ground is 3d it has like nooks and crannies and raised bits of ground and it's just going to really make that start stand out by itself i'm going to use army paint this dirt splatter and dry brush that across these raised parts of the ground just to add a little bit of highlighting i still want to keep it quite dark she's in a cave right it's pretty pretty dark and gloomy in there so i don't want to brighten it up too much i'm going to use necromancer cloak just to start the basing not the basing that that the first layer of highlighting i should say that's probably better terminology and i'm going to do that to the rock and also the helmet she's got on her back and just just brighten that up a little bit making it adding back in some detail after that i'm going to put the dry brush down and get out my detail brush and just paint in some of the harder to sort of paint areas so that's her gloves those shoulder pads i'm just painting on the highlights of all the all the the folds in the the 
elbow pad. I'm also going to get some across her tank top as well. Then I'm going to take some Filthy Suit, the lighter grey by the Army Painter, mix that about 50-50 with the Necromancer's Cloak, and just add another layer of that highlighting just to the very, very edges of her clothing, all the folds, special attention to her, her bottom there, making sure that looks good. And then also sort of the edges of her boots, uh, the, the top of her boot, and then around the bottom of her boot and the toe caps of her boot, that sort of thing. I'm also catching around the rim of her helmet. Apologies that this video keeps going in and out of focus. This is a really small model. The camera has massively struggled to focus on that instead of my my relatively huge hands. So I I could see it was doing it at the time, but I didn't really know how to avoid it. So massive apologies for that. I'll try and pay more attention to any subterra models I do in the future. And then going to do the same dry brushing technique on the rocks, just with this this mix of filthy suit and necromancer's cloak, just to give that a bit more highlighting. I'm going to use Bay Blonde to highlight the light on her torch. I'm also going to do the same on a on a helmet. I'm not sure that would be turned on if it was on her back, but this model's really, really sort of lacking any bright colors. So any excuse to put a little bit of color on I was using. And then I'm going to try and do some OSL, some object source lighting. And I'm going to be applying a really, really watered down mix of that Bay Blonde just with some distilled water and just trying to blend that onto the raised parts of her, of her knee as though light was coming out of the torch. I didn't do a great job, but that's my first sort of ever attempt at it. And it just adds some color to the model. So I'd suggest giving it a go, maybe looking up a tutorial how to do it. I obviously did that myself and didn't do a massively impressive job, but at least there's some color on the model and you, at a distance that looks okay. Obviously you're looking at this really, really close up on the camera. You don't look at it that close when you're playing on the board. I'm going to use Machine Gun Metal, the darker silver by Army Painter. And that's going to be to add in some, some sort of steel rings for her shoelaces, the edge of a torch, and some sort of edge highlighting on her helmet just to make it look a little metallic, grey metallic I was going for. I'm going to use Crushed Skull by the Army Painter. That's in their new green horde set again. And this is just to put her in two pupils. It's, it's an almost white, it's just slightly off white, but it's close enough for me and realistic, realistic enough for eyes. Survivor skin's out, and this is going to be to start highlighting up the face and fix any mistakes I've just made putting in the pupils that I might have caught a bit of white, say on her nose. I didn't, but I could have done. And then sort of around her eyelids, maybe I need to just touch that up. But other than that, I'm just going to be highlighting up all of the bones. So it's sort of cheekbones, a chin bone the neck bones, the neck bones connected to the shoulder bones, the shoulder bones to the biceps. Yep, I am actually a doctor. A lot of you don't realize that, but I am the, no, I'm just lying. Anyway, after that, I decided the hair wasn't bright and or dark enough compared to the artwork. So I thought I'd try some toxic shader. That's a purpley shader by the Army Painter. And I'm just gonna try and make the pink pop by darkening it in the shadows if that makes sense i wasn't sure if this would work that's why i didn't shade it to begin with but as i progressed through i just needed it to be brighter and while that's drying i'm just going to paint in the rim of the base black now i'm going to paint all the rims to match the colors of the artwork so she's black her dye is black and she has like a base that goes a plastic base if you've got the game you know what i'm talking about that goes on the rim i might just glue those on anyway but i thought i'll start by painting that rim to match their colors then I'm getting that pale flesh again to highlight up her hair. So I'm just taking my detail brush. I'm using some Rosemary and Co brushes on and off in this video, just testing those out. So I'll let you know how I get on with those. But this worked really, really well. I was really happy with it. Just painting in just basically each strand of her, of her hair back in, getting the highlights back up and really making her hair pop out now, allowing that sort of dark tone below to make her look brighter that's it she's finished she only took me an hour that's pretty fast i think the model was quite difficult to paint it's incredibly small it's smaller than zombie side and it's really really fiddly and her colors are quite difficult it's just a lot of black and the black doesn't give you a lot of room to work with it if you don't just want to make it look gray so i'm quite happy with it and i'm glad it only took an hour and on the tabletop this looks fantastic and i'm really enjoying the subterra let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this video if you'd like to see more of subterra if you've got subterra and how you feel about the game as i said i'm loving it thank you all very much for watching